Oh, I thought you threw Rob shot. I was like, oh no. What happened? I actually wasn't too worried about it. I'm kind of. Oh, Oil cap filter off. cap. Oh, wow. I've never seen that happen. People were warning me. It. People were warning me about that. Barely even revved it up. I know. I, I mean, it's what, 80 degrees outside? Barely even gave her a rev. At least it happened right now. Yeah, well, I mean, you'll be good, though. It's cold and the oil stick. It's cold. It's like a, 90 degrees. Well, yeah. Yeah. Imagine, yeah. Can you imagine if I did that at like <laughs> 20 degrees outside? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the 6 0. The, that thing's been sitting for a long time. He fired it up for us and uh, he gave it a little rev. I think the oil was still a little cold and it made a bunch of oil pressure and it blew the cap off of the top of the uh, oil filter housing. So it kind of blew that apart. Welcome home. Actually, we haven't even unpacked yet. Our, our bags from Florida are still here. So let's go ahead and get into this, guys. So as you guys saw there, um, I ripped off that footage from Dylan, my buddy, his YouTube channel. You've probably already seen that. But in this video today, you will find out with me together what's really going on here. The reality here is I went ahead and started the truck up, let it sit and run for probably only about a minute and a half, not even that long. And I mean, it was 80 something degrees that day. This a couple weeks oh. ago. Okay, yeah, it wasn't that long ago. Yeah, you didn't even tell me about it. Yeah, I didn't tell her about it. <laughs> find out from uh, seeing the oil underneath the truck. It's like, what happened there? Lots and lots of oil all over the ground. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys exactly what happened what I'm doing to correct that problem. And then what we're gonna do once I correct that issue is we're gonna make sure we didn't blow the motor up. And this is exactly why I have you on the channel today because we're gonna figure this out together. My very first dealings with a power stroke. So I revved it up just a little bit. It was just a subtle, not, just even, a little not even joking. They were all there, they saw it. I barely gave it a little bit of eye. I haven't even And then all of a sudden, oil pouring out everywhere. A little gut-wrenching today, so I'll show you guys exactly what we're gonna do to correct that problem. Oh, we hit a deer with the Tahoe. Yes. <laughs> it's just getting, actually, this video right here, guys, is gonna be very, very crazy to watch because there's a lot of other Lots little of carnage. stupid, crazy stuff I gotta show you since we've been gone from Florida. So we well, hit- Well, that was before we went to Florida, the deer. Right, so we hit a deer with the Tahoe. Check it out. I have a new bumper, and let me show you the damage. We'll talk about that later. Let's okay. show them. So I was doing about 70 miles an hour on the highway, maybe a little faster. Deer come jumping out right in front of us and I hit this thing square on. Now I fixed the front end a little bit. As you can see, it's all cracked right here, but the whole grill piece popped out. I'm not even going to complain one bit. Yeah, I'm actually very shocked. Like no dents on the hood, no dents on the bumper. It was just, it was like the target was right here. Yep. Like how? The deer literally just perfectly hit square right on. here. Yeah. It would push this back a little bit too. Oh, did but, it? Yeah. But this is our this is our daily truck, guys. This is just something I drive to keep the salt. You know, I don't like to drive the nice vehicles anymore. This is a nice vehicle. It's it used just, to be my nice daily. Dude, we bought this until in Tennessee you... when it was super sweet and clean and it was my nice daily until uh Earl took it over. So <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, and then I touched your dad's truck and Look what happened, so. Yeah, I know, everything you touch. So check this out, guys. As you can see, we have oil still on the ground, which I need to clean up. It's still and then let's tell them about um, the lovely storm that came while we were in Florida. Okay, here we go. So let's talk about this really quick. I was gonna make a separate YouTube video on this, but it's really not that serious. We had a massive hail storm, and we're talking this hail was like, like that big coming from the sky, and it pummeled my fleet that's sitting outside right now. So but the I damage think, isn't, honestly, the damage isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I haven't really looked at everything completely, so. I think the LMM got the worst. Right there. There's a tiny little one right here. Good old hail damage. This isn't, I mean, this is, I was. Wasn't there one on the fender too? I was expecting like bad, but. Yeah, from the video I saw, yeah. Oh, here's one. Yeah. Right there. Good for me to even check that out. I have to get a ladder. I don't know, guys. Tell me if you pick something out here. This is our first time looking at it, too. But I think the Ford looks good. Oh, yeah, dude. But if we line next. It's right on the top. If we line next, you wouldn't even see that. Dang. Yeah, there's a bunch of them there. This is where I'm coming from right here. The worst things was probably the top of the box, the bed right here. So do you think we should do an insurance claim on that? I don't know. 
No, I mean, I don't see enough damage to have to pay a deductible. $500 deductible. And to be honest, um, if I want to line next my... Oh, it'll still show the dimples. We know that, but well, I think no, if they made it thicker... Line be thick enough, I thought. Yeah, it, it would be thicker to cover up those little little spots. All well, right. I got to clean up Earl's mess. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so that's exactly what happened. Broken. And I hope that's it but because it ran for like maybe two or three seconds after that happened but once it exploded it blew the top of that oil cap that plastic oil cap and it literally broke it and oil came out of that and spilled out everywhere into the engine bay which we will be cleaning up and of course we need to replace the oil filter cap as well as the oil filter we're going to go a step further and just go ahead and do a full complete oil change in our driveway if we have any oil left, I'd love to pull it in the garage. Pull the engine oil dipstick tube out and let's see if we have any oil in the truck. That'd be good to know. All right. So it's bone dry. There's oil in the engine, but it's not reading on the dipstick. Well, look underneath the truck. You can see where it yeah, all spilled out. You're right. <laughs> so uh, instead of trying to drag this truck or push it into the garage and get it on the hoist, it's probably better to do the oil change outside in the heat. I agree. Spoiled already. We have that TLS lift in there, so love it, by the way. I'm excited. Can't use it because Earl breaks stuff. What? <laughs> Let's do this. Foam pad. Luckily, this truck is jacked up enough. So, off camera, I went ahead and started taking this off, but unfortunately, it's on there so tight that I don't want to strip that nut so or that bolt. So, I'm using an impact, but I'm just zipping it out. So, calm down, guys. I'm not putting it on this way. There we go. See? Nice and easy. Now, this oil hasn't been changed for probably, I, I don't even know, I'd imagine this oil's been in here for years. And I'm really curious to see how much oil's left in the engine. Obviously it wasn't reading on the dipstick. And then I want you to stay tuned because I hope I didn't blow the motor. Let's find, or engine, I'm sorry guys. You know, some people get upset when I say motor. Here we go. Hmm. Quite a bit of oil. Yeah. It's a lot. 112 bucks on the oil that I just purchased. Oh man, there was a lot of oil left in that engine. Woo! I wasn't seeing it on the stick. You see it? Yeah, it wasn't showing on the stick. That's weird. I'm better to overflow this here. Surprisingly, this oil looks really good. Not a bunch of chunks and stuff in it. Doesn't look bad. So let's go ahead and dispose of this right now. Part number. And this is for the actual legit Motorcraft oil filter cap. So we're going to put that on because I was talking to my brother-in-law and he told me that his dad, and he owned the truck, installed, he installed some parts store stuff. And, and a lot of people don't know that, you know. In the comments, I was reading from you guys as well to ditch that oil filter cap and it bit me in the butt later. So anyways, this is a legit one. And this is your oil filter canister right here, which I love because it's so much easier to do an oil change so you don't actually have to unscrew one underneath the vehicle. And simply all it is is you just bait, well you gotta put the O-ring on here of course. But basically all you do is you just clip it in and you're good to go and you put it in. My understanding, Hammer installed a shorter oil filter which didn't completely sit all the way to the bottom where it's supposed to be sitting on the oil filter housing. And I think what ended up happening with all the excess pressure and the way the oil was underneath there, and on top of that, that cap was probably super old and from the heat and the cold and all that. It just took its toll. I revved it up just a little bit and there she goes. But I'm really glad it happened in my driveway instead of on the highway or something crazy. You know what I mean? So we're going to go ahead and install this right now. And again, we're going to fire it up with oil in it. And hopefully we didn't blow the turbo or we didn't blow an engine or something crazy because not gonna lie guys, I am a little nervous. I was reading a bunch of forums and I got a little nervous last night. So let's do this. Oh, there we go. <laughs> a little difficult when you don't have this thing on there yet. We got her. Not to, not to mention dad probably had it on yeah, pretty he's a tight. Wrong guy. Alright. I was imagining when this happened that this entire thing busted. Like this whole thing exploded. So this really wasn't that big of a deal. I'm glad it, the way it broke it the way it did. 
makes life so much easier. Here we go. We're all looking good so far inside. Let's go ahead and replace it. This is all legit motorcraft stuff, guys, so I'm not messing around this time. And then let's go ahead and put some oil in it. You wanna do the honors? Sure. Guys, I'm using 15 quarts, and this is going to be the Rotella 15W40 synthetic, full synthetic oil. I know there's a lot of better oil brands out there, but I think this is what we're going to be using. I think that's what Hammer had before he did his last oil change. Stuff pours quick, though, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Tree nuts. There you go. I think we are done. Let's go ahead and get this cap put back on. Here's another cap. All we gotta do is fire her up. Oh, let's check the engine oil level first. All right, now we're gonna check the oil. It's obviously full. Let's hope nothing happens. <laughs> I'm nervous. Oh, great. First power stroke and we're already breaking it. I am already breaking it, right? Yeah, let's say you are. If I blow this engine up, I'm gonna go ahead and put something better in it. Like a Cummins? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Alright, so from what I read, last, the last guy that this happened to put something on the Power Strokes forum and said that it was hazing out a little bit of gray and um, they think that they blew their turbo. It was making a funny noise. So we're gonna go ahead and let it idle for a while, a while, like five minutes, maybe 10. It's like 86 degrees outside. I know it's already warmed up, but I wanna let all the oil get through everything. And we'll go ahead and take it down the road and make sure everything is good to go. I'm hearing a squealy belt noise. It's probably from the oil. So if you are a power stroke owner, you know more about this than I do, let me know if some other things that I'm missing here. So far, so good. Earl got sidetracked. Well, if anybody wants to buy the snow plow that came off this truck, I'll sell it to you like really cheap. This truck's sitting on 38, so if you have a lifted vehicle, this plow right here is actually modified to fit a lifted truck. So. Let me know, email me, DM me on my Instagram or something, but I'll never use the plow. Moves nice. You guys can see there's a little bit of fogginess going on underneath there. Our oil burning off, yeah. A little bit back here too. We got on the drive shaft a little bit, I noticed. But it's not leaking, I think we're good. We have good oil pressure. Everything looks solid. So we'll go ahead and pull old red in the garage. Big red in the garage. Old red? Yeah. Old red still isn't here. I know, it still isn't here. Yeah. I know. WTF uh, Logistics is actually in route to my location. They should be here tomorrow yep. to drop off Old Red. But Big Red over here never had the opportunity to fit in our garage. So oh. let's go ahead and put it in the garage for the first time. No, it was, it's been in there already. No, it hasn't. Yes, it has. Oh. Before it was before finished. The, before it was finished. The walls yeah. are finished. Okay, before it was finished. Yes. All right, let's do it. Just fits. You better watch your doors. Oh! <laughs> yeah. 
Whew, luckily I'm a little guy. So I would say this is our very first upgrade, the oil change, with the exception of the Boost Auto Parts tow mirrors that we just put on the truck. Come show that really quick. These are considered retrofit tow mirrors for a power stroke. So the older style was a little funny look and they kind of, to me, look like the Mickey Mouse ears, but um, these right here. Those, those, the old ones look like the elephant ears. The elephant ears, that's right. <laughs> but these actually would go to a newer style Ford pickup. And they, of course you have the smoke switchbacks, um, the, the painted caps, paintable caps. This is just a gem. These mirrors are awesome, I love them. They really set it off. They make the truck look a lot newer, a lot nicer. So anyways. You know, we took it around the block, we drove it around, let it warm up, uh, whomped on it once or twice, and it runs beautiful. So, thank God we didn't blow the engine. You well, didn't blow oil the engine. Pressure, <laughs> oil pressure is where it needs to be at, so we didn't lose any oil pressure, there's no oil leaks. Um, I think we checked everything that we needed to. Let me know in the comments, guys, if there's something that I'm overlooking, because again, I'm not a Power Stroke gearhead, okay? This is my first time owning one. Of course, with the Cummins, if you want to show that as well. <laughs> I can't wait to get this thing started. I know a lot of you guys are Duramax folks that follow me on the channel. I'm a Duramax guy, 100%, and this is my first time doing this. Another thing that I want to keep you guys up to speed on, this is something that I want to try out. I want to actually dabble in the powder coating in my garage with a stove and everything. So I am going to purchase a blast cabinet, and I'm actually going to blast this thing. I'm actually going to clean it all up, and let me know what color I should go with. The valve cover is only on here to keep everything clean up here on the top, but this is um, my brother-in-law's old engine, and this is the valve cover that came from it. So I want to, this is the cherry on top. It's just a valve cover, I understand, but I want to go ahead and powder coat it and make it nice. So guys, let me know what I should do. Let me know what color. I'm thinking red, actually. Maybe a red, white, and blue theme. I don't know. It's all patriotic, red, white, and blue. I got the white Garen transmission. I have a red transfer case from Kodiak truck, and of course, Miller Engines built this bad boy for Looks us. Looks like you need white up here. You think white? Because you got red and blue, but mm. there's no white up here. Mm. That's a good idea. I was thinking red. Man, you might have something there. Okay. Maybe like white, maybe even like a, nah, it's gonna get too hot in there. Powder coat will hold up though. But I'm thinking maybe like a decal, like an American flag decal, like maybe right here, or maybe one on each side. I don't know. Let me know, guys. You guys are smarter than I am. Here's the remnants of old red right here from the truck meet that we had. Um, of course, I replaced all the brake pads and rotors. I really didn't need to. These rotors are in great shape. And of course, these brake pads are in really, really good shape. But I don't know. If I know a guy that wants them, I'll just give it to him. But very usable stuff. And of course, the headlights and taillights. What do you think about the headlights? The new ones? Um, yeah. No, they don't, they don't really go with your truck. I think you need something darker. Like, it's white. And then the only thing that it matches is the Boost Auto Parts mirrors when it's yeah, on when they're, when they're on. on. But that white with the you red know, trim in there, I don't think it's looks kinda right. It's kind of like a McDonald's truck. Yeah, it looks kind of weird. Big shout out to Dirty Diamond Diesel for helping me and his buddies come over here and spend all their time, their blood, sweat, and tears to help us put this thing together because uh, this will be a big deal. Greg A did tell me that I won't be able to hit a thousand horsepower. He pretty much told me that unless I don't want the thing drivable. And he makes a great point. I don't think I need Greg A to tell me that, but yeah. it's it's true. We need nitrous to amp this thing up to a thousand horsepower. We may or may not be doing that. And I don't prefer Earl to be messing with nitrous. I don't know, man. No, I don't prefer that. Man, this is America. If I want to blow up my diesel truck, I'll do it if I want to. We had a blast at the truck meet in Florida. We had a blast. First time ever in that state. We had a lot of fun. It was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful, of course. Super hot, but the beach was beautiful. Right, guys, hey, that is it for this video today. Oh, by the way, we have a truck show July 31st, North Prairie, Wisconsin, Ryan's Diesel Service. Boost Auto Parts will be there, custom offsets, Anthem Wheels. We're gonna have a dyno. Make sure you guys pre-register. I left that link in the description below as well. If you pre-register, you will get a t-shirt from Ryan's Diesel Service when you get down there, which will be really good. Pre-registering the dyno is gonna give you Three pulls for $100. We make nothing out of that. It's just the guy that's bringing it, but he knows what he's doing, which is really awesome. We may be dynoing the Life Max or Old Red or the Cummins. I'm not exactly sure what truck I'm bringing. I'm not too set on it. We'll see you guys, uh, but we look forward to seeing you out there. Yeah. You wanna say something? Hopefully I see everybody out there too. Yeah, we, we're trying to find a babysitter. So uh, <laughs> July 31st, uh, be there or be square. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I think everybody who's anybody is going to be there. So I know it's a lot of traveling for you guys, but if you can make it, definitely make it. Except for you. Except for We're going to try to get Mrs. Truckmaster out there. I'll be a nobody. <laughs> oh, come on, man. All right, guys. We'll see you on the next video. Stay tuned.